Well, that's it. There's our water softener system. Like with everything, days and hours and hours and hours of research and it comes down to a couple simple products. Isn't that how everything works? It, the solutions are always relatively simple, but what it takes to get there. Yeah, the research is just mind numbing because there's about 10 bazillion different ways to get to a similar outcome. And I think no two water problems are exactly the same. And so there's not the same solution for everybody. Although there are standard solutions which solve most common problems. So you have to think, wah, wah. So yeah, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the research because there was lots and there was lots of reading and there was even a little bit of like photoshopping and kind of dragging water filtration components around a little bit. Kind of like, what about this? No, 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 it's what about like that? we did their water system. Yeah, very similar. So we wanna talk about that stuff, but right now this system is dry um it just got delivered and so it, it, it we need to prime it we have to get it ready to do the filtration work and that involves quite a bit of kind of setup we'd rather start that now so that it maybe it'll be ready soon to actually process or clean water um, so i think we'll jump to that and then we'll jump back and kind of talk about the system and all that jazz from the well we're gonna go full flow through this pressure regulator to the softener but because at the softener we're gonna be using very low flow we don't want to burn the well pump up so we're gonna put a second hose on the well head and we're gonna open this valve slightly which will just allow the pump to move some water through which will help to keep it cooled off are you excited for this day I am uh, it's kind of uh, Timely, I think is the right word, because the local road and bridge just put road limits on the roads. And if you're thinking, they wouldn't stop people from hauling water, would they? They do try. Yup. <laughs> they don't stop them, but they require you to jump through a bunch of additional hurdles. So most of the time, it's not a big deal. But right now, during what we call breakup, where the roads are particularly soft and very vulnerable to damage from heavy loads, the road department is extremely stingy when it comes to what they let people haul. And water happens to be pretty stinking heavy.
Uh oh. Did it the wrong you way? booger. Nope, it's trying to cross thread on me. Come on. Don't be doing that now. Once you cross thread plastic, it is really difficult to get it to thread properly. There we go. Whew. Dodge that bullet. These are kind of nice fittings. They're really similar to the... Um, like they're poly fittings? Or? They're poly, yeah. And so they use like O-rings and gaskets instead of like pressure to create a seal. So this is just a really easy fitting to... And they're, you know, they're really forgiving. Let's see. Is that where I want that? That'll work. So our setup is going to be super rudimentary. We're trying to do the least amount of invasive stuff on the house, but we're, at the same time, we're trying to get basically a long-term permanent water solution set up. So for now, we're just going to be using garden hose fittings from the well coming into the softener and then coming out of the softener and going into the cisterns. We're going to continue to use all the gravity fed stuff for today. We have so many other things that we need to work on that we can't really focus on getting this integrated into the house just yet. It's double work, kind of the nature of the beast. We have a backwash line and that's where, we'll talk about that more later. How about that? Um, and then we have the softener line. So that's kind of a basic idea of how we're gonna be using this unit. Our well's visible again. Hey, Mr. Well. This is a mud pit. I would walk around that. I would not walk through that. Oh, she's gonna fit. Cool. Let's go that way for the house. We'll go this way for the bypass. And we'll turn that off for now. And we'll prime this direction. Oh. Ready? I don't think we've ran this in a while. It's been a while. This is why we prime, guys. So, look at that, we're already clear though. I mean, that was probably a couple, three gallons of icky water, but a sediment filter will easily take care of that. I mean, we're pretty much already clear. I mean, I'd be happy with that. Let's check it in the bucket. You can smell the iron. It's not really? strong, but it's definitely there. Yeah, I'd say that's probably already plenty good enough for the softener to deal with. Look at that, not bad. So in theory, when that comes out of the softener, it looks, it looks great. Oh, look at that, we're getting a little bit of, so that got cloudier again, wow. more irony. When we had our water test done, we found out that we do have iron in our water, which is very, very common for groundwater or well water. But there's a couple of different types of iron, and the type of iron that we have is what is called in-solution iron or clear water iron. And I know that sounds confusing, but there's actually visible iron. And that's what you're looking at here is iron that has actually oxidized and now it's visible. So this type of iron is only a problem because it's the wellhead has air in it and the iron as it reacts to the oxygen in the well becomes visible. Either way, the water softener unit that we're using, our water conditioner unit, is going to take care of this. But the primary issue is the clear water iron because when it sets in your toilet or in your sink or your washer, it starts to turn to rust. And that's where you get all these rust stains in all of your, your shower and your toilet and everything. So we wanna deal with that too. But this, this iron is only visible because it's been sitting in the wellhead and we haven't been running it. I think that's good. You can tell that there's a little bit of sediment in there, a turbidity. That hopefully will be solved by the water softener also. It has, the, uh, it has a rating of 50 parts per million as a sediment filter. So um, we should be able to get you know, any turbidity, which I don't think that's turbidity. I think that's just iron and things that are in the water. So, Speaking of the well driller. Is that, is that him? That's the well driller. You said I could turn it off? Yeah, ready. Okay. So that's a sample of what the well's producing right now. And I say we compare that to what the softener produces. That'd be a good test. So when we get that far. You want me to take that to the wall? Uh, yeah, take that end actually. Okie doke. I'll try to keep it from getting kinked. Is it enrolling it like that hope? Yeah, it does, I think. 
Well, it's something to just leave the door open for a while. What do you think? I think we should, yeah. Makes bugaboo really, really frisky. Oh, does it? You told me you left all the doors in the house. Oh, yeah. And the windows, and he like was going crazy. Oh, he was going nuts, yeah. Yeah, but right now he's outside. I'll go outside. Unless there's water coming in. I'm gonna grab another clear bucket. So at first, this isn't really going to show a difference because we're not using the softener right away. We're just filling it up, but it's going to be bypassing a portion of the water around the softener, like avoiding the softener. So this, these two should look pretty similar at first. And then when we turn the softener on, we should start to see the big difference. And this is for the backwash. I don't know that we even need the backwash today because we're not going to be backwashing, but we'll put a hose on there anyway. So I think we're ready to turn the unit on and do the initial program. So we'll plug that in there. So let's set the clock and it is 12, 37. And it is Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday. Wednesday? Uh, that's a really good question. I think it's oh. Tuesday. <laughs> It's Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh Jesus, I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> so we set all that stuff and I think the gallons per minute is actually the flow. We don't set the gallons per minute, it's telling us what the gallons per minute are. So we have to tell it how hard our water is and that's something that it uses to determine how many gallons it can go between a regen cycle. And the gallon or the, the hardness came from our water report. And grains our water guy set it to set it to the next highest grain. We're about 14 and a half grains per gallon, so we'll set it to 15. Perfect. Instructions are already falling apart. So the days of override, it says maximum days between regen, which is six days. Let's set this to off. And that's gonna be based on gallons, perfect. Regeneration hour, so we can tell at what time of day we want it to regen, let's go 2 a.m. Alarm buzzer is set to on. It will sound if there's no salt or if an error has occurred. Let's leave the buzzer on. So it says that we have 1,366 gallons of processing capacity. And that is based on the number of grains of media that are in this unit, which is about 20,000 grains. And if you take 20,000 grains and divide it by 14 and a half grains, it'll give you 1,366 gallons. So we know that's the capacity of this unit between regenerations. Good news for us, we only need probably about a thousand gallons per cistern fill. So what will happen is we'll fill the cisterns, we'll put it through a manual regen cycle, and then it'll be ready for the next time we fill the cisterns. Well, we've read the instructions about six ways, forward and backward, and I think we've got it figured out how to get this thing ready to do the thing. So we're going to do that now. The well needs to be full flow to the house and then like half flow to the bypass hose. I am ready. Turn it on. Get up three, two, one. I'm getting no flow in here yet. Now I hear water coming. Here it comes. I don't see any leaks yet. Um, now I do. Um, let's let it go. I think it's okay. Very tiny, very tiny leak that we might be able just to tighten up a little bit. I think it's going okay. So let's let it go for a little while. So yeah, that's what we expect. It's About bypassing though, right? It's not right. supposed to be doing anything yet. Right. So that's water that's coming out of the well and it's basically going around the water softener right yep. back into here. We're just trying to purge it of air and debris and anything. So that's good. So our bypass hose that's over at the well should be pumping out quite a bit of water. I should check to make yep. sure. Let's check to but, make sure the okay. working. Yep, it's coming. Okay, so let's maybe set that closer to the bank so we don't flood our own property. Flood someone else's property. Right. Oh yeah. Lots of water. Press and hold region until the motor starts. That's promising. Fill. Press regen again, it'll say softening. Press regen again, it'll go to backwash. And unplug it. All right, it looks like now, finally, after all of that, we're ready to fill this tank with water. So we have our backwash hose set up. 
our bypass hose or outlet hose and our inlet hose. And we're supposed to open this valve like just a tiny bit. So if you burp it or with air or you fill it too quickly, the media that's in here, sand, carbon, whatever, could burp and go out your outlet hose and you just lost capacity. So we want this to happen until there's no more air coming out of our backwash hose. And that could be a while. So let's leave that right there. And that's it. And now we wait until it stops burping. Well, it says to do that until there's no obvious air coming out. I don't see any sand, so I think we did it slow enough. And we didn't lose any media. It didn't take that long. I was under the impression it would take like 90 minutes, and it probably took 15. Maybe we did it wrong. So once we get that happening, we're supposed to open that valve fully and let it flow full throttle. So I'm thinking I'll probably have you in here in case it gets too full throttle, <laughs> and then we'll move on to the next step. I hear a little bit of air. It's inconsistent. That there, yep. Yeah. On no other person YouTube, person's YouTube channel is it appropriate to just film the toilet a lot. We film our toilet in our RV all the time. <laughs> if you're watching this channel for any amount of time, you're quite accustomed to us filming the toilet. All right, we got the inlet full open. This thing's completely oh. full of water. Pretty heavy. You're not going to move that now. Um, so now we have to turn the power back on. So can you plug it in? So it says restore power, momentarily press region to advance to brine. Check to verify water being drawn, da 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 da. Press regen, go to rinse, then we'll unplug it. So it won't be immediate. Exactly what I want here at 2 a.m. I know. Right? Yeah, we might have to choose a better. It'll do like 5 p.m. Okay, so it should be sucking brine water down. There's no brine in there right now. Not sure how it could even suck water because there's nothing but air in there. Um, let's try something. You can hear there's suction there. I'm just gonna fill this with water. that we forgot to read the quick start guide the three easy steps guide okay I'm doing it the lazy way you're getting a lot of air and no water yeah pretty sure the water's going the other way it's never gonna suck if that's happening blow bubbles in my chocolate milk Okay. Seems like water goes one way. Hmm. No idea. Well, we're stuck because we're not able to pass a test that's in the manual. For whatever reason, we're not able to draw anything out of the brine tank. And it makes no sense because it, it water goes in. So why won't water come out? I don't know. And I'm not going to tear it apart, like Alyssa said. House built house back. Built back, guys. This Welcome to house remember. building. All you got to do is, all you got to do is, it's eight steps. steps. You can do this in 15 minutes. Um, anyway, so we've texted the, uh, the water guy and said, hey, what's up? And we'll see if he can get back to us in a reasonable amount of time. But I don't think it really matters because we're not trying to brine anything right now. We're trying to get going on getting water out of this thing. So we're going to just skip that step and move on. We want to verify that the water in the tank's being drawn down. We can't do that because we can't get any water to come out, come out no matter how hard I suck. So let's do this again. Let's go ahead and power on. And we're back. So we push the regen button again. Kind of not liking that regen button. Every time I push it, something weird happens. So now it should say rinse. That it does. It yeah. said there should be a rapid flow to the drain. You might want to go check the toilet. Uh, I think it's about what it was. In an effort to try to make this whole process a little bit easier, that is like the getting started thing, we needed to buy a pressure uh, regulator because our well pump is capable of, I think, 125 PSI. And if we like barely open this valve, and the pump doesn't have any water flowing through it's going to burn out so we put the y out there so that we could like run some water through it but not all the water and then we put a pressure reducer well we bought another pressure regulator that's in line right now and i think that's how that's hurting our flow i think we don't need this part 
So ultimately, we need to get rid of these pressure regulators when we go to fill the cisterns because we don't need them. Basically, this unit is going to be full open and the well pump is going to be full on. So I think that's affecting our ability to do this test. Um, it says to leave it in this mode, so I went ahead and unplugged it until the water runs steady, clear, and without air. And then it says to load the brine tank with softener salt. I'm tempted to not do that if it's because not working, we right? don't have an answer and I don't want to try right. to fish salt out exactly. of that thing. Screw no. that. So then it says you can set the bypass valve to normal and hit regen again and now you should be at ready to go. Why don't we plug it back in and we'll be in normal operating mode. And we're back. Place the bypass valve in normal operating mode and then press regen and the unit will return to normal operating mode. Now it says softening. This is stressful. Yeah. I don't love this. It's not fun. Like, I don't know. I don't want it to be easy, but I, I just hate like when things don't feel like they're working the way they should. Yep. We're not blaming this on the unit. We're totally blaming this on ourselves. It just doesn't, it just feels annoying. Okay, so now because we're back at the uh, gallons per minute and the capacity remaining screen, we're now ready to go. So now it wants us to open some sort of faucet or something full open for a couple minutes and clear out the air. I think that's already happening because right, we have a hose we have outside. A hose in the driveway. So in theory, now this thing's doing its job and we should go get a bucket of water and compare it to the water coming in. So that's where we started. Okay. What was coming out of the unit. Impressive so far. That's like crystal clear. So that's going in. Right. And that's coming Good out. Good job, water softener. <laughs> so here's the thing. This water is actually getting darker just sitting here because it has clear water iron in it. Right. And the real test would be to leave this water out. Oh, don't interesting. Don't touch it. That'd be a fun test. And see if the water turns brown because if it does, it's the still... water softener is not getting rid of the iron. Right. So out of, just out of curiosity, I have to taste it. Oh my Looks god. pretty good. Doesn't taste irony at all. No. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. Hold on. I got to go get a glass. Not too shabby. You're not going to believe that. Here. It's, it's good. I mean, it doesn't have a taste. It's like water I'm used to. That's huge. I wouldn't say it's like really good because I don't know what really good water tastes like. It doesn't have a taste. It's water. That's the good thing. <laughs> taste that water in that bucket. Trust me, that's got taste. Really? Oh yeah. Can you taste the hardness? Alyssa, guys, Alyssa's not a water connoisseur. Let's just <laughs> leave it at that. Okay, I'm going to let you guys be the judge. We can't trust Alyssa to judge the water. Which one would you guys drink? That one or this one? That one or this one? So now the system's ready to go. We're not ready to fill the cisterns yet, so we don't need to waste capacity. We'll just turn the well off real quick. Well. That's super exciting. What do you think? I think we're days away from filling our cisterns. There's no point in rushing this process. The fact I is think, that we can. Yeah, getting it working, making sure all the bugs are worked out, making sure the brine tank works, like getting everything good. Then it'll feel good to fill the cisterns. Not like, oh crud. Turns out we filled our cisterns full of that on accident. Uh, Whoops-a-daisy. We'd rather fill it with that. I would say based on those initial results, I'm super impressed. Uh, I have to kind of back up just a little bit and, and speak to this unit. We were tempted to kind of go the temporary route. A lot of this house build is kind of like do, do enough until you can get to the next stage. And the water system and kind of getting the whole house plumbed it's a huge project and we just we just need to be able to use our well today. And so we ended up talking to a local water contractor and kind of talking about the situation that we have. We sent him our water results that we got from the well test and he actually pointed us this direction. 
We were originally going to build more of a component style system that had a sediment filter in it, a chlorine filter, a carbon Something filter. Something that was going to require a new pump box. It looked, uh, what's the word, amateurish. <laughs> anyway, we, were, we shared this situation with him and he pointed us this direction. And it turns out that there are media, which is the sandy, carbony stuff that's in this softener unit, that can deal with a lot of the problems that we have. The biggest problem, hardness. Second biggest problem would be iron. And the media that's in here is actually able to deal with the iron, as is evidenced by the water coming out. It also has a rating as a 50 parts per million sediment filter. So in one unit, we replaced three separate things. The other benefit is that this unit is a backwashing, fully automatic unit. If we fill the brine tank full of salt, this thing will automatically regenerate on a pre-programmed schedule. It'll back flush. It's an amazing unit. So this is like permanent. Probably will last us as long as we live in the home or longer, 30 to 40 years. That's a lot better solution. Now, it was not cheap, but in the context of long term, I think it's gonna save us a ton of money because we won't have to basically take this amateurish system and either throw it away or give it away or something. So what we're having to do is kind of use this system in a temporary configuration so that we can start using the well and get our cisterns full. And then down the road, when we get further with the plumbing on the house, we'll, we'll actually hard plumb this into our home. One more detail that I think is important to share, the iron filters and um, the other sediment standalone filters will require periodic replacement which adds cost to the overall water system and complexity. If you forget to change the filter, you might suffer from reduced water pressure, or you might end up with iron in your water after all, causing all kinds of other problems. This unit being all in one is able to take care of all that, and because it's able to backwash and clean itself, it's not something that we ever have to replace. The media is a lifetime media, and the salt, we'll have to replace the salt, that is a consumable item, but the cost per, per month or per quarter is very, very nominal. I think it would be dangerous to conclude from this unit that this is something we're recommending to other people. And you have to be careful with that because these systems all deal with very unique problems. So they're not at all equal. This unit really is well suited to our water issues. We've got sediment in the water, not a lot. We've got iron, a little bit, and we've got hardness. And our water's not really that hard. I mean, it's not something you'd want to put on your car and let dry in the sun but it's something that this unit can handle and uh, we're not gonna be constantly in a, a regen cycle. So this is really well suited to our problems. There is one more little benefit to this particular product and that is when the water is leaving the softener, it actually tickles the water a little bit with voltage and it releases some of the chlorine or the chloride from the, the salt that's present and it actually will sanitize the line. So in, in reality, it's solving a fourth problem, and that would be chlorine injection, which is a whole nother water issue. We're not trying to give you guidance or anybody out there guidance on how to deal with your water problems. We're just kind of sharing, this is how this system works and why it's a good solution for us. Probably one of the best tools for this process has been the well test results. We actually sent them off to a laboratory. We actually took them to a laboratory. Um, we'll link to that video, give that one a watch. It was very enlightening, kind of taking it into a professional uh, lab and having them test it. You can do home tests. We haven't done one of those yet. I think we do want to do one of those, more just out of personal curiosity and to get comfortable with the process because I think as a well owner, you really are responsible for your water quality. No one's going to test it for you. Um, so we have our well test results and that gave us a place to start with choosing a treatment system for the house. And it's super confusing. If you go to Amazon and you start reading reviews, you're going to end up in your, to your eyeballs in like opinions about hardness or iron or nitrates or whatever. I think the best thing we did was pass this information on to our pump and, and water guy and say, hey, what would you do here? And he had like lots of different solutions. He recommended this one. And when I sat down and read the document, it made perfect sense because it solved so many problems at once. And here I was trying to do it with like five different 
uh, peripheral tools. If you're like me though, when you get the well test results back, you're gonna be super confused about what all that stuff means, milligrams per liter, grains per gallon, manganese, calcium. And I think that the other recommendation we would have is an ebook that we found that really dives deep into each one of these subjects. We're gonna to link to that below the video. It's called The Definitive Guide to Well Water Treatment. This thing is 139 pages that first of all says don't read this ebook until you have a well test because everything in the book is based on what water problems do you actually have. And I feel like in a world where we're, we're all driven by fear, mostly fear of the unknown, the intuition is maybe the more money and the more complexity that we throw at something, the safer it's gonna be. And there are many articles out there that say that a, a very complex problem may actually, or complex solution may actually create problems that you didn't have before. This ebook is fantastic because if you have your well test results, you can read in plain English what clear iron is, ferrous iron, what bacteria are, what problems you could have, how to, how to diagnose them. Even if you already have a well on your property and you're treating the water and you've got weird reddish stuff in your toilet, it helps you diagnose that. So if you're looking to kind of go down this path or you have water treatment issues already, give this ebook a look. I think you'll be really impressed. So a really true test will be leaving this water sitting here for a little while. If you guys are paying close attention, this water looks darker to me than it did when we put it in the bucket. And it could be just because it had time to kind of settle or whatever. If there's iron in there, it will actually oxidize. And oxidized iron is rust. And that's where you get the rusty washing machine, the rusty toilet, the rusty uh, shower. We don't want that stuff. So we're gonna leave these two buckets sitting here for a few hours and we'll just see if we get any change in color. So this is going well and this is good timing. We already mentioned that the road limits are in mm -hmm. effect so hauling water is gonna be more difficult. But the other reason is gardening is right around the corner and last year watering the garden, which we have mulch and chips and I think we did well conserving water. We still watered quite a bit and mm -hmm. we we're really shocked at how much water we were going through. It pushed our system, and I'll say that. I don't know that we ran out of water, but we are gonna have a bigger garden this year and we really don't wanna worry about water. It's still gonna take time to run this and you know, top off the cisterns with a thousand gallons, but maybe it yep. takes an hour. And each trip to go take water or to go get water is probably an hour, hour and a half round trip between getting the water, bringing it home, pumping it, babysitting it, and that's only for 250 gallons. Yep. So the goal at this point isn't to have it completely hands off, right. but it's always harder to like leave your property to go get something than it is to just spend time whenever you feel like it, topping the system off, or if we actually run out of water, it's not a big deal if it's like 10 o'clock at night, you know, and you're tired, like. Yeah, this will just give us more control. This is obviously not a hands-off solution, and a lot of the things that we've done on this property are just baby steps toward independence, but we're happy to have water on the property. Right. It's still gonna be a little bit of work, yeah. but now we can put 1,366 gallons per regen cycle into the cisterns, which is about three quarters capacity. Yep. We figure that in the in the peak of gardening season, that should last us a couple weeks. We don't like to build temporary things. We did want to get the well up and running. And I know that when we have time to sit down and plan the water system, we'll make a really good decision. And we don't about, want to rush. We'll right, want to take our time. Exactly. About how to tie the well into the house. And when we do that and we do it right, it'll feel really good. And then we'll be sleeping when the regen cycle comes on and you hear exactly. at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I think we're going to leave everything set up because I think the hope, the plan is that tomorrow is cistern filling day. And if it's not, we'll have to tear this whole thing back apart and try again soon. Well guys, it's been about 24 hours. What do you think? You think it worked? Not too bad. We do have some bubbles in there and I think I've heard that that could mean that there's some sort of a bacteria or something present. In our water analysis, we didn't have anything show up, uh, but they don't test for every conceivable bacteria. They're really only looking for coliform bacteria. So I'm not sure that that's a bad thing. I might do a little bit more research on it, but I'm not alarmed. But in all, I would say that the iron, the soluble iron is definitely gone. Because if it wasn't, this water would look just like that. I'm mildly curious if the flavor or whatever has changed at all over the last 24 hours. So I figure I'll just give this a test. Smells great. 
It's good, guys, it's good. We're gonna move ahead with filling the cisterns. This convinces me that the iron is definitely gone. But I do wanna do a test on this water because I'm just kinda curious where are we at for hardness? Is there any resi or residual minerals or anything? More just out of curiosity. But I think in all, putting this in the cisterns is not gonna cause us any problems. Mm -hmm. 